self-control. Even when he went to jail, he still was a godly man. Yes, 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 yes. Even locked up. Even locked up without cause. Oh, come on. See, you see, see, when we go through stuff without cause, oh, we ready to go on. Oh, we about to let everybody know something's wrong up in here. But he went to jail without cause and still was a man of God locked up. Will you still represent God? Will you still be a man or woman of God? Even when the devil had you on lockdown? Because see, had he lost his self-control while he was locked up, God wouldn't have got him out. Huh. You see, while you locked down, while you in the middle of the circumstance, you have to still exercise your temperance and self-control so that God can get you out of it. But if you don't want to exercise those things, guess what? He lets you stay in there until you learn it. Some of us are saying that we have to tr uh, trouble with our self-control and temperance because God is allowing you to stay in the fire until you learn your lesson. If you shut your mouth and learn how to exercise these gifts, these fruits, then he will allow you to come out. But God cannot allow you to elevate when you don't have your book ends in place. He can't allow you to elevate without love. He can't allow you to elevate without self-control because you will lead someone straight to hell. So when you look around and you say, why am I continually going through the same situation, same routine, same circle? It's because I cannot elevate until I learn the lesson that I'm supposed to learn at this level. You will stay in your situations a lot shorter when you go ahead and start exercising the fruits of the Spirit while you're in it. You see, we don't have a problem exercising them when we done came out. Oh, my God, dear glory, I was going through, but now, God. Oh, we happy then. No, we have to learn to exercise these things while we in the middle of it. I'm going through, and I'm still going to put a smile on my face. I refuse to let the enemy see me sweat. If I know that God's going to bring me out, why would I let the enemy see me sweat? I only need to sweat if I don't know better. I only need to sweat if I don't know no better. Life lesson. Joseph faced a lot of different temptations from, from Potiphar's wife to revenge on the brothers that sold him into slavery. Because see, she won't own to jack Joseph up, right? Before she, before Joseph ever got there, his own brother sold him into slavery. And you think you got issues with your family? They ain't sold you to the Africans. So you know a lot better than Joseph right about now. Ah, they could, they would. <laughs> well, God has blessed you so that they can't. Look at your blessings. Count your blessings. Make them one by one. <laughs> Joseph faced a lot of different temptations from Potiphar's Potiphar wife to revenge on the brothers that sold him into slavery. Yet Joseph never wavered from his devotion to the Lord. Catch that? He still never wavered. I don't care what he was going through. He never wavered from his devotion to who? Oh, see, that would kill me. Because people go through stuff, and they will refuse to come to church. Because the church folks refuse to come to church because somebody in here says something. But this man don't got sold into slavery, then got locked up, and he still refused to give up his devotion to the Lord. How quick are we to give up on God because of people? Because somebody said something. Could you really handle the challenges of God? You're asking God to elevate you. And if you are willing to give up on your devotion to God because somebody said something that hurt your feelings, how do you think you're going to elevate to go through some real tests and trials and tribulations for him to realize that he can really trust you? My daughter, my son, I can't trust you because when, when, when Sister Susie said this about you, you just wouldn't even come to church and worship me. When, when, when Brother John said this about you, you came to church but you had an attitude the whole time. Do we understand how we value people's uh, 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 actions against us more so than we uh, uh, value our devotion to our Lord and Savior? Wow. It's crazy. 
Yes, ma'am. you base your walk with God on anybody else. So let me help you understand something. Those people out in the world who does not really know this thing, they may have a little ground to say, well, you go to church and you act like this and you act like that. They may have a little ground. But let me tell you something. You listen here now, you know too much. You know too much to continue to allow people to dictate your relationship with God. I don't care how much somebody stabbed me, crucified me, they ain't got no heaven or hell to put me in. So therefore, I have a relationship with my creator. I cannot allow any of you in this room to dictate how close I get to him. All y'all can go to hell tomorrow. That don't mean I'm going. I love y'all. But I don't love you enough to go to hell for you. None of y'all. You understand me? But too often we look and we will use other people's situations and other people's issues of why we not going to do right. And you know what you are? You're a liar. You are not where you want to be with God because you have not chosen to be. No one in this church, matter of fact, let's go further, no one in this world can dictate your relationship with God. He is a personal savior to each and every one of us. None of you can affect my relationship with God. Isn't that awesome? That's an awesome thing that no one can dictate your relationship with Christ, but yet we give that a power away because Robert said that I was too ugly to be preaching on a Wednesday night, but I don't feel comfortable preaching now. And don't look at me, just listen to me. You know what I'm saying? But people will say stupid stuff like that. Y'all, first of all, first of all, I'm going to turn my back right now, and I want y'all to check y'all self. Because y'all have given stupid reasons of why y'all ain't come to church. Well, if she hadn't said this, well, they make me feel like I got to go. Well, they, shut up, shut up. All oh, that's lies. You ain't here because you don't want to be here. Everything else is a lie. It's a lie. And all lies will have a place well in the lake of fire. At least have truth. At least have truth. Stop blaming other people for what you're not doing. Yeah, you might have a chance to go to heaven you tell the truth. But you, you are shooing in for hell because you know you're going to lie on the people in this church. Well, I ain't there because they make me feel because it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You sure ain't going to hell. His actions were always defined by his relationship and faith in God. Not in the people, not in what they did to him, but his actions was always as, 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 as uh, deferred by what? His relationship and his faith with God. Why do we continue to let people dictate? If he weren't about people, he would have been gave up because when his own family sold him into slavery, he would say, what else I got to live for? You understand me? But he didn't, he didn't care about his mama, his daddy, his brothers. He didn't care about none of them. Don't even mention no sisters. I'm sure they ain't had all boys. Didn't even mention no sisters. None of that mattered. But he always talked about his relationship with who? When he turned down Potiphar's wife, it was with the word, how then? Could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Hmm. Can we read that together? How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? Ain't that scary to see we saying it? But when you face with wickedness, what do you do? Because huh? huh? see, what you have to realize is you're not just sinning against that person. 
When you sin, you are sinning against the same God that was beaten all night long. The same God who was nailed to a cross. Spirit in his side. Thorns in his head. That's who you sinning against? It ain't really worried about you sinning against each other. You ought to be worried about sinning against your creator. Because every time I sin, I am putting him back on the cross. Every time I sin, when I know better, I am telling him it wasn't enough. Go back on the cross. Let him whoop you some more. Because what you have to realize is that us being his children, every single time we sin against him, the devil goes to his face and says, ah, oh, look at that one, look at that one. What you going to say about this one now? Y'all know, you got some parents who think they got good and good kids. And as soon as one of them kids mess up, the other family, uh, the other mothers and fathers be like, yeah, you thought that was a prize child. You thought that she was going to be this. You thought he was going to do this. And, you, and, and they throw it in the mama's face because the child messed up. That's kind of jacked up, ain't it? But guess what the devil do to God? Every time you mess up. Every time you say, I am a child of the Most High. I am a man of God. I am a woman of God. And then you go out here and do some stupid stuff. The devil is raising his ears. Mm -hmm. You thought he going to make it this time, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Look at her man. Look at her man. That's your little evangelist there. <laughs> Y'all think he don't throw that in Jesus' face? Y'all really think? Y'all really think the devil don't throw that in his face? And there's some scripture to go along with it that says he does it. I just can't remember where it's at, but I need to find it. But there's some scripture that makes it, that, that proves that he goes to Jesus and, and throws in his face the accuser of the brother. He sat there and, and throw it. Yes, sir. It's in Job. He said it's in Job. It's in Job. But he goes back to Jesus and he makes fun of him. We well, crucifies him all over again. Yes, sir. That you would pass the test and you fail. Wow. God had enough faith in you to pass it and you fail. Oh, Jesus. How can he have more faith than you than all oh, along? He cannot. The devil cannot attack us except given permission by God. God will not give permission except he's already equipped you to win. You decide to fail. So God has enough faith and has equipped you to pass the test. And he said, go ahead, devil. Try your best thing. We're proud. Proud of his baby. Yeah, I done equipped her. I done equipped him. He ready for you now. And then you fed it. And then the devil turned around and like, Aha. there's your faithful servant. <laughs> Not so. You'll punch the devil in the face. You know how you punch the devil in the face? Pass the test. You want to beat him? Pass the test. Every time you pass your test, you punch him in the face. When I was a little girl, they used to always say, we're going to get a devil back at night. <laughs> Every time we come to church, they be ready to have some church. Boy, they say, we're going to get a devil a black eye tonight. You get a devil a black eye by passing your test. Live right. Perfect obedience. That's how you hit the devil. We cannot, natural cannot fight. Supernatural. In order for us to fight the enemy, we have to get in our supernatural state. Which you can't get if you don't have the Holy Ghost. Your Holy Ghost is the power that comes, that gives you the ability to fight supernatural. So you just going to church. And you just going to church. So you're going to go to church. And you still ain't got the power because the Bible can work. The Bible says, after the Holy Ghost comes, you shall have power. That means before you get the Holy Ghost, you ain't got no You just go to church. But you don't have the power to tell the devil what? Nothing. No authority whatsoever. 
Well, he tells you, if you want to be strong, if you want to be mighty, I will give you that power, but it will only come after you receive my Holy Ghost. Exactly. There is nothing new under the sun. She said, God gave us the open book test. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything we go through, you can find it in the Word. Everything that we go through, the answer is already there. It's that we choose to close the book and do it our way and then cry to God when we mess it up. We choose to close the book with the directions. And then... You know how when you go to the store <laughs> and you buy this shelf and it comes with directions on how to put the shelf together, right? Where we open the box and we get the directions and we throw them off to the side. Are y'all telling me Bishop don't want to do that? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So we open the box. The box has directions on how this thing supposed to go together. We throw the directions, give them a minute to shut down and uh, it'll cool off and then it'll come back up. Uh, the, the, the directions are in the box. You take the directions out and you throw it off to the side. And you put the thing together the way you want to put it together. But it don't work. You done made your own holes when the thing already had perforated holes. <laughs> and now because it ain't right, you want to put it back in the box and go take it back to the stove. You done altered it. You done altered it. So now it's no good for you and nobody else. So therefore, if I have my natural body that God has given me, my natural temple, and I've been given the instructions on how to put this thing together and how it's supposed to go, but I close up the instructions and do what I want to do, and then when I got cancer, and then when I have uh, sugar diabetes, and, and when I have syphilis, and, and when I have venereal diseases, then I want to take the stuff that I done owned to, I done messed it up because I did it my way, and give it to God on my heel. Fix it. <laughs> that part ain't no good for you and nobody else at this time. But now you want to go back to the instructions. You can't get a refund now because you have changed it. You have altered it. It no longer has its warranty. <laughs> you see, it's like a computer. When they make us our laptops now, they put this seal on the back of it. And they say it comes with a warranty. If anything internally goes wrong, with this warranty, I will fix it. Or I will replace it with this warranty. However, if the seal has been broken, your warranty is no longer bad. Ah. It's no longer valid because you let something touch it that wasn't you see God promises us this abundant life but when we break the seal and allow stuff in that ain't supposed to be in then he don't have to keep that no more he don't have to he can choose to fix it. He can choose to heal you. He can choose to replace that which is broken. He can choose to, but he does not have to because you broke the seal. <coughs> she said, first chapter of Ephesians states that the Holy Ghost is your warranty for eternal life. Ephesians. Okay? So the 
fact of the matter is, <laughs> you learn from your mistakes. Because it gives you so many chances. I had a computer and I broke the seal because it seemed like a minor problem. Broke the seal since we have all this computer tech around here to fix that minor problem. But then a major problem came up. And because the seal was broken, the company was like, we don't have to take this back. But because I have faith. But because I have faith. They took it back. They fixed it. And sent it back to me. So the next time that thing came, I ain't let nobody fix it. Y'all ain't with me. <laughs> you see, you break the seal and God gives you another chance. He don't have to. He's not required to. But he gives you another chance. He gives you a start over, a do over, wherever you used to say when you were a kid. And then you still take it and let somebody else tamper with it. No more do overs. I'm going to say over there this time. I have to get through shit. We can all learn lessons from Joseph's self control. It is so easy today to give into the temptations that Christians face. Sometimes it is actually harder to walk away from temptation than to get into it. After all, there is no such, there is so much peer pressure to drink, to have sex, to do drugs, and not go to church, and many other things. Look at the younger generation now. Most of your friends are doing what you're not supposed to do. You have more friends living foul than you have living for God. Right? So we're not, God didn't set us up and say, well, this is just easy to do. He understands that there's going to be pressure. But to whom much is given, much is required. How bad do you want it? Are you willing to give up what you need to give up in order to get where you need to be? <coughs> no, it's not easy. But anything worth having is worth working for. That's the problem with this generation now, is that they don't have work ethics. That's a whole nother lesson. I ain't gonna start that one. <sighs> oh, Jesus. However, God rewards your self-control. Look at Joseph. While he spent a number of years in prison and, and as a slave, eventually he rose to the highest appointed position in Egypt and even found his family once again. God will eventually, God will eventually, if you're faithful, if you're faithful, if you live right, if you practice self-control and temperance, God will eventually reward your self-control. You just need to have some patience. Which is another fruit of the Spirit. They all work hand in hand. But we want what we want when we want. I want a husband right now. I want a wife right now. But Rob, based on y'all. <laughs> I'm not intellectually known. They're on the microphone. Stupid. I mean, outrageous. Stay away from me. It's contagious. No, we're going to delete that on YouTube. Delete that part. Delete that part. Delete that, delete that part. Uh-uh, <laughs> don't take that. Y'all stop, man. We got to get that right. <laughs> But you can't have what you want when you want it. Not my will be done, but thine will. If God has not sent you that husband, it's because you're not ready yet. If he hasn't sent you that wife, it's because you're not ready yet. And so we are so, 
It's we are so big headed on what we want that we not realize that if God gave me what I want right now, I would be ready and I'd mess it up. I'd mess it up. Let me give you an example. When I was 16, I wanted a new car. All my life, my mama told me she gonna buy that car when I get sixteen, and I wanted my new car. Well, just about the time that I was supposed to get my new car, my daddy's truck broke down, and he went and got a new truck. Oh, I was one half sixteen years old, which meant I had to get his old car. His old car at the time was a 1980s sedan to be a Cadillac, so it ain't like it was no hoop day. <laughs> I was the only one with two girls in high school that drove Cadillacs, and I was one of them. Long, big day. Baby blue. So the girl down the street, she got a new car, and I got my dad's car. So I'm mad. But with time comes wisdom. Because by the time that child graduated from high school, she had towed that brand new car up. It was stuff just from Merrill. Well, by the time I graduated, I had two dents. One on each side, magic pair. Yeah. I'm just saying, I ain't perfect. Don't be judging me. Y'all cars got dents right now. Some of y'all cars in the shop right now. You don't, don't. Ain't gonna call no name. But I had a magic dent on each side. Somebody had hit me on each side. But now that I have graduated and I'm a little bit more mature, I have learned how to take care of a car. So now when I get the new car, it's going to last me longer because I know how to take care of it. If I got a new car at 16, I wouldn't know how to take care of a new car. So I would destroy it. I would not know the value of it because I hadn't paid for it. You get where I'm going, but once you get out there and you start working and you start understanding the value of something, you treat that something better. You see, people begin to beat on their husband, beat on their wives, cheat on their husband, cheat on their wife, because you don't know the value of something. God does not send you his daughter, his son, until you truly understand the value of what he's sending you. Otherwise, you'll mess it up. If he sent you a wife right now, you would not value her the way that you're supposed to. But you just want right now, so you just gonna mess her up right now. So he said, well, okay, go mess up one of the devil's turn, because you ain't gonna mess up mine. And, and I talk with some of you, and, 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 and I use this all the time. A, a premature birth has a 50-50 chance. A 50-50 chance. What does that mean when it comes to this situation? A premature marriage has a 50-50 chance. If you wait until the relationship is developed and both people are loving on God and you get married, your marriage can be prosperous. But if you jump and get married before you're at that level, your marriage has a 50-50 chance. And actually, I would dare the, 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 the goal as far as a 70-25% chance nowadays because 90% are, are divorced nowadays. You understand me? So if you know that if I do this too early, it's probably going to die. Wouldn't a smart, mature thing to say, Lord, your time. I don't want to go through planning a wedding, spending all my money, going in my pretty dress and tuxedo in front of all these people and vowing before God and all these people until death do me part. And three months later, I got to go all over again to get a lawyer and get a divorce and go to court and all that stuff. For what? For what? For what? For what? It's a waste of time. And it's a waste of money. 
The courts are getting fat. Lawyers are getting paid. Off the voices alone. Yes, ma'am. I went to go uh, I went to Social Security in uh, Virginia, uh, here in Virginia, and to get my uh, Social Security card changed. And the lady in the front desk, she was like, oh, she was like, you just got married? I was like, yeah. She was like, um, when did y'all get married? Um, I was just like,